Hello, welcome to Oil for the Journey. This is Victoria Marmalejo, your journey reader for today. We are in Acts chapter four and five, and we are taking our reading as always from the Bridges for Peace Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. Thank you for joining today. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you for a word today, and we pray that it would be life and light to us, that we would learn something, uh, that you would highlight even things that you wanted to speak to our hearts. Pray we'd be encouraged by it and even uh, convicted and what else? Instructed by it. Yes, Lord. So we thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Acts chapter 4. Peter and John arrested, my Bible says. Now they spoke to the people, the priests, the captain of the temple, and the Sadducees came upon them, being greatly disturbed that they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. However, however many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of the men came to be about 5,000. And it came to pass on the next day that their rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas, the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were of the family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people, people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. This is a stone which has re was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no name, no other name under heaven, given among men by which we must be saved. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled, and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against them, against it. Uh, but when they had commanded them to go aside out of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, they, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in his name. So they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than to God, you judge. For we cannot but speak things which we have seen and heard. So when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom this miracle of healing had been performed. And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand or your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. 
by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Now the multitude of those who believed were of one heart and one soul. Neither did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own, but they had all things in common. And with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all. Nor was there any among them who lacked for all who were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of the things that were sold and laid them at the apostles' feet. And they distributed to each as anyone had need. And Joseph, who was also named Barnabas by the apostles, which is translated son of encouragement. Well, we need more of them. A Levite of the country of Cyprus, having sold, having land, sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. Chapter 5 But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession, and he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young men arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. And that was about three hours later when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out too. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in found her dead and carried, carrying her out, buried her by her husband. So great fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. And though the hands and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. And they were with, uh, they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord multitudes of both men and women so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of peter passing by might fall on some of them also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to jerusalem bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits and they were all healed then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him which is the sect of the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they had heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought out. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported, saying, Indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them, saying, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple teaching the people. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, 
lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in his name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And so we are his witnesses to these things. And also, and so also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. Put them outside. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Theudas rose up, claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone, for if this plan for if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. And they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. There you have it. Acts 4 and 5. Pretty awesome word. Uh, very empowering, right? Like it makes you bold. It's, you know, these were awesome men in those days and we can be awesome men and women in these days so i encourage you i'll be a son of encouragement to you today and say may you have the boldness of these disciples and may we all have this boldness i pray that for myself to be bold and to go out and do the works of jesus i believe we can do that so let's be encouraged in the lord and i want to encourage you also to be a part of reading the word on oil for the journey be a journey reader we would love to have you on let's spread this word far and wide we are increasing and this is a movement for good it will give us courage for the day that we're living in right now become a journey reader everything you need to know is below in the notes we would love to have you so uh with that blessings to you and shalom shalom